I want to talk to you today about a few comments I received from a recent video I did called Girlfriend or Caretaker. Let me read you the three comments. The first one is from Motorhead2140. Have you made financial arrangements for her when you're gone? Lawn gardens. Having a bank account and knowing how to use a debit card is nice, but it means nothing if there isn't money in the account. Since you asked her to stop her career, it is your responsibility to make sure that when you're gone, that she doesn't have to live in a shack earning 7,000 pesos a month. That would mean meeting you was a mistake if that happened. And the last comment is from Home Base Belgium, 359. I do have some concerns. You say that you're going to be together until the end, and I truly hope so. But because of your age gap, your end is going to come much sooner than hers. Is she taken care of if that happens? Because many girls have a good life as long as their husband is alive. But when he dies, they go back to square one. So before entering into a large age gap relationship, I think we should have a contingency plan. And we should also talk it through with our wife or girlfriend in my case. Many of those women don't want to talk about death, but it is a reality of life. And even if we're wealthy and we leave her a large amount of money, does she know how to handle it? Or will it be gone in five years? Leaving her another 30 years to bridge without money, that can be quite a burden. You have to be smart enough for two. I don't want to sound negative, just level-headed. I found all three of these comments and many more comments to be positive. They're not being negative, they're not throwing people under the bus, they're not saying bad things, they're pointing out the reality of the situation. So I'm going to explain to you what I have done to secure Janet's financial future. It's not what you should do. It's not what I'm telling people to do. This is what I'm doing. This is our plans. Janet and I have sat down and had many discussions about this. These comments are asking me about Janet's financial future. Have I planned ahead for, for her future? Have I made arrangements for her future and her career? Well, let's first do a little background on Janet. She's 31 years old. She got pregnant when she was 21. She finished high school. She met a boy that she, she loved and cared for. Uh, they you know, were together. She got pregnant, had the baby, and then he took off. So that, that's her past. Now, her future from that point of 21 to 31 was she lived with her parents. She lived with her family. They live in a nice house in Cantilly. It's a large piece of property, it's a large lot, and it's a big family, seven siblings. She went to work as a housemaid, making four to five thousand a month. She started out at four, they gave her a raise up to five thousand after a while. So she was making a hundred US a month. Now I met Janet, and we'll go from that point. Once I met her and I decided I wanted Janet to be with me full time, I did not want a part-time girlfriend. I did not want a girl that worked and would come home at night, you know, tired, exhausted, take care of her child, and then just have a few minutes for me. I wanted a full-time girlfriend. I was selfish in this aspect. It is something every girl that I talked to, I told that's what I wanted. And if they couldn't provide living with me and being full-time, uh, the, the relationship would not work. So I offered Janet her salary. Now the reason I can do this is, one, I can afford it. Doesn't mean everybody can, but I can afford it. And two, her salary was so small. So our agreement was on the 5,000 she earned a month, out of that 5,000 she always gave her mom 2,000. And that left her three. So we went and opened a bank account and I told her every month we put 3000 in your bank account and you give your mama 2000 
that's the equivalent to the salary that she had. And in addition to that, I started paying for her Phil Health, which she did not have at the time. Also making a contribution to her Social Security here in the Philippines. She was giving the minimum of 530 pesos a month, I believe it was. We bumped it up to 700, and in the future we'll even go higher. But those were the offers I made for her to come and live with me full time. As Calvin would say, the unspoken word, Janet knew if she come to live with me, I would pay all the bills. I would pay the rent. I would pay the electric, the water, the food cost. I would help her pay for her son, buying him clothes, shoes, a motorcycle helmet. All these things I would take as my responsibility to do. So that was our initial financial arrangement. And my thought always on this was, at the end of each year, Janet would have been saving 30, 35,000 pesos a year in her savings account. She's not allowed to touch that account. That's a deal breaker in our relationship. If she goes into that account and takes money out to give to her family or use it for anything, this we both understand and we both agree this is money for after Mike. And I have access to check her account uh, as she has access to check mine. And she doesn't withdraw a penny from that. Now once in topple. Since that arrangement, Janet and I have made, we have grown stronger in our relationship. And now that we're contemplating marriage, I have increased her monthly amount to 5000 So now she's saving 5000 a month in the, in the special account, you know, her own personal account for life after me. Now it's up to almost 50 k And hopefully if we're together for 10 years, it'll be, you know, half a million pesos. This is more money than Janet would have ever made working. It is hard for a woman once she hits 30 and doesn't have college to have a job, have a good paying job. They're going to have the small jobs. They're going to have working in an eatery, in a restaurant. Uh, and that's back in the kitchen working in the restaurant, not out front as a cashier or a waitress. It's going to be in the kitchen washing dishes, you know, cooking maybe. Good jobs are hard to find for a Filipino, both male and female, if you don't have college. And I see one ads all over town on a light pole, on a building, anywhere. You see them all over the place. Help wanted, call center, help wanted, bank teller, help wanted uh, in the supermarket or in the mall. They're all asking for girls or guys. 21 to 28, college degree, single. They put a lot of restrictions on who they hire for the better jobs. An older woman is going to have a very difficult time finding a good job in the Philippines. I hope you guys would take a moment to like and subscribe to this video. And also check out our new channel, Dumaguete Rentals, and subscribe to it. It's brand new. We need the, the subscriber base. We only have 250 today. And we also need the, the watch hours, which will come. I know they'll come. Leave a comment below on what you think. Am I doing right? Am I wrong? Am I doing this all wrong, backwards? Um, I don't know. I'm just doing what I think is best. And for an older woman in her 30s, 40s, God forbid the 50s, you can't find a job unless you're going to be a housemaid. You're going to be a caretaker hired privately. And you're just going to have menial jobs that pay very little, 10,000 pesos a month or less. Or you're not going to find one at all. You're going to have to, you know, hustle and sell vegetables on the side of the road. It's just a struggle to earn good money here in the Philippines if you're not, if you don't have that college education. People just don't give you the chance. So what have I done to help Janet understand how to handle money? Granted, we'll put some money in the, these bank accounts, but when I met her, she did not know how to open a bank account. She didn't have the proper IDs. You know, we went to 
uh, Phil Health to get her uh, her ID card. We went to Social Security Administration to get her a, a, an ID card with her picture on it. We, we just got her, her driver's license. She has her national ID, but you need two IDs when you go to the bank to open a bank account. And she didn't have those. So uh, this was a whole learning process of opening a bank account. And since then, she's open too. And as for a debit card, she didn't know anything about it other than people put a card in the, the machine and they get money. So I showed her how to activate a card. I showed her how to check her balance online. I showed her how to use the machines properly. Which ATM machines you go to to take money out with no fees. Which ones will cost you if you do a transaction. We also took the time to learn how to use a debit card in the stores. So when we go into Hypermart or Robinson's Grocery, we pay with a debit card. So you don't have to carry a lot of cash and you don't have to budget the exact amount that you're going to spend there. Now Janet's comfortable now using the debit card for purchases. She knows how to do it. Our last trip up to Cebu, uh, we paid for the hotel with a, with a debit card. And Janet knew how to do that. So all these little things where a year ago she didn't know how to do any of it. It was all new to her. She was scared to try. She can do that now. We also received a credit card for Janet. So I'm going to teach her about credit, the value of credit. And here in the Philippines, I don't know if they have a credit reporting system like in the States, but credit is important. You have to build a relationship with your financial institution. She has to build a relationship with BDO. She has to. You never know when an emergency will come up in life and she's going to need a, you know, the assistance from a bank a small loan, a bigger loan, and she has to know the cost of a loan. Now to get a loan here in the Philippines, it's very expensive. There's a lot of fees uh, trying to get a personal loan. There's a lot of fees on the credit card. So we're going to just use it maybe one transaction a month and pay it off. One transaction a month and pay it off to build the credit line for her that the bank will learn to trust her in the future. Now my money I've shown her how to access my money in the States. Janet knows when, when my Social Security comes in or, or a, a YouTube check comes in, if it isn't going directly into our uh, Philippine bank account, she knows how to make that transaction from my bank to World Remit and then from World Remit into her account or my account. And she knows how important it is to do it correctly and to make sure there's no mistakes in the transaction. She has to make sure the name's correct, the account numbers are correct. She has to know all this stuff. And she takes her time. She learns. She'll sit up all night watching, and I hate to say it, watching YouTube on how to do things. She'll research things on how to do them. Same thing with how to operate the camera. Same thing with how to upload a video to YouTube. She stays up late at night after all her work with her son and all her housework is done to learn things. So education, she, she's not having the education of university. You know, we can't do that. But she can get what I call street smart. She can get common sense smart. How to do things. How to transfer money. How money is valuable. And she knows the cost of hospitals. She knows the importance to have money set aside for medical emergencies. Because her family's gone through this. Her father had a stroke. And he was a hard-working man. I, I didn't know him prior to the stroke. But he was a hard-working guy. He built the house that he's in. He's built the two other little houses that are on his property. And he had a stroke. And now, as you know, once you have a stroke, life gets tough. But she knows the cost of those bills. She knew the money that the family had to have. And the struggle the family had getting that money together. So she understands the importance of saving money for that emergency. Because they, she lived in an emergency. I don't know how they handle it financially. I wasn't here at the time. I didn't ask. But you can see in her face whenever we talk about money and you know how much we have. Every month we go through our finances. I show her how to check the balance. So she knows 
we're growing our finances monthly a little bit each month more a little bit more in the bank a little bit more in the bank and she understands that and she is proud when we have a good month and we didn't overspend and we were able to stay in the budget and we were able to save some money and still have a good time in our life so how do I leave her do I leave her with a bank account and no money in it do I leave her money and no education on how to handle it the answer to both those is no have I financially left her in a great spot if I was to die today she would be better off today than she was a year ago but every month I live every two months I live every year every five years I live her financial situation will get better we do have plans for her future we do plan to try to buy a lot somewhere and not necessarily going to build on that lot but her son's 10 and when her son's 18 if they own a piece of property a piece of land he can get involved and they can build a house together and there will be money in the bank account for her to start to build a house if I'm not here but in the meantime I'm not interested in building a house I'm not interested in spending a lot of money to build a house I like the availability to move around but to buy her a lot somewhere close to her family is something I'm going to leave her and if I was to die tomorrow there's enough money here for her to go ahead and do that so my financial resources how am I going to leave her Rick A once said in an old video I remember he was leaving him and his girl they, they, the relationship ended and he was going to another island but he gave her a motorcycle now this was a short term thing and I'm not judging Rick this is just a statement he made he said always leave the girl better off than when you found her leave her in a better situation than when you found her I don't have a life insurance policy to leave Janet and I'm too old to buy a life insurance policy it just doesn't make sense at 68 to buy a life insurance policy I don't have assets in the US I have cash and nobody really knows where my cash is and how much I have Janet will know more the attorney knows and she knows where to go if I pass and who to talk to but her future is in her hands once I'm gone all I can do is the best to educate her show her how, how I do things show her my way of life and what I think is the right way just because I think it's the right way does not mean it's the right way it's just the way I like to do it other guys are much smarter than me other guys have better planning than me other guys are much younger than me but I'm 68 I'll be 69 next month so yes I think I've taken care of Janet financially I do not think Janet will be living in a shack I do not think she'll be working for 7,000 pesos a month but she might no matter how much I leave her or what I leave her she might decide to go work she might decide because she's a hard-working young lady she might decide yeah I have this but I can go work and make seven ten thousand more pesos every month and she might do that so what she decides to do for a living once I'm gone is not my choice but she has she has options and she has much better options than most people here I see a lot of girls who have been in a relationship with a foreigner and then he just takes off he goes I can't live in the Philippines and he's gone and they have to go back and live with the parents and go back to the exact situation they were in except worse because they did give up their job worse because now five more years have gone past in their life three more years have gone past in their life so for me personally in my life with Janet judge as you wish and all those comments that I received on my age gap or caretaker video 99.9% .9 were positive comments positive comments 
And a lot of the people that watch our videos know Janet. So to answer all three of those comments, I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to leave her the best that I possibly can. I'm making as many arrangements as we can. And we're always talking about it. And financial education is something I'm always giving Janet. That is the one thing I can do. I can do that when we sit down and talk. I do that when we drive around and we see a piece of uh, property for sale or we see somebody building an inexpensive house and we stop and look at it, take some pictures. We're always looking at her future. Now she doesn't. The, true, the truest statement of all the comments I got there was, let's talk about when I'm gone. They don't want to talk about that when you're dead. They don't want to know it. They don't, they don't believe it will ever happen. They know it will, but they don't want to face the fact that it's going to happen. They want today to last forever. And we all know today doesn't always last forever. Today just changes all the time. Every day is different. But they don't want to talk about the future. They don't even want to talk about the future of their son going to university or going to college or going to high school. They're just trying to get through the week. Mostly, you know, the I'm not talking about the rich Filipinos, um, the wealthy, the higher educated one. I'm talking about the, quote, general population. And I, that's even bad for me to say that. I just know Janet's life. They're just trying to get through day by day by day or month by month. They have a lot of assets, her family. They, they own some nice property here, very expensive. But the trouble is, it's only an asset. It's not cash. And because the father doesn't work and the, because of a stroke and the mother's old, older, taking care of everybody, uh, you know, life is a struggle. Life is hard. And they all say that. You ask Phil, life is hard. They go, yes, life is hard. But it's their life. It's the life they chose. And they don't want to talk about the afterlife. They don't want to talk about funeral arrangements. They don't want to talk about where you're going to be buried or, or cremated or what to do with your body. That you have to write down and put it in an envelope what you want done and make sure there's money available for them to do that and give that envelope to someone responsible. A copy to Janet in our in our box and a copy to the attorney here in the Philippines so that part home base uh, Belgium is right they don't want to talk about death but as a man when you come here to the Philippines I don't care if the girls older than you same age as you five years younger 40 years younger it doesn't matter it's your responsibility as they said in the comments to take care of this girl if you're choosing her for a lifelong partner, if you're just dating, that's a whole different thing. We're talking about a lifetime commitment here. And Janet, I'm doing everything I possibly can to keep her uh, well taken care of. This YouTube, the money from YouTube, it comes in a uh, hundred percent of it. Twenty-five percent goes to charity. 25% is going to a special savings account for Janet. The other 50% are my ta the taxes I have to pay and our extra expenses for having a YouTube channel, going to town to meet people, buying equipment, many different things. And our new channel, Dumagini Rentals, is a channel that Janet's going to run. And it's going to be linked directly to her bank account. And it's easy for her to do rentals. She's been doing it all along. She doesn't do the voiceover, but she does the, the, the appointments, the filming, the editing, making contacts with people. That's all Janet. And if something was to happen to me soon, I would hope she would continue that. And I'm going to do our best to get it up and running. Take a look at these videos that I have on being with a single mom. Our budget videos help us out watch our videos until next time thanks for watching